of adding and subtracting fractions, some of which included mixed numerals in them. Now we want to move on to multiplying fractions. Okay, so the rules are different. We do not have to get a common denominator like we were doing before. Okay, so it's very important that we don't mix up the different types of questions. Okay, let's fill in our blanks first of all. Fractions do not, are the words that go in there, do not, you can even write the not in capital letters because I don't want you to forget it. You do not need to have the same denominator to multiply fractions. To multiply fractions, all you need to do is multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. Now that's very simplistic form. There is some extra stuff to note on that though. If possible, we want to simplify or divide or cancel, all those things basically mean that we're doing the same thing. We want to simplify our fractions first. Okay, now to do that, we're going to be doing something called cancelling. And cancelling can be done either vertically or diagonally. Basically, anywhere on the top of a fraction with somewhere on the bottom of the fraction, if you can divide by two or any common factor to simplify, then we're going to do that. Okay, but it needs to be one on the top and one on the bottom, not both on the top, for example. It has to be one top, one bottom. Okay, that's the second dot point here. Cancelling can never be done horizontally, okay? Always one on the top, one on the bottom. A whole number can be written as a fraction with a denominator of one. We've seen that already in our other questions, so just a little note of that in here. Anytime there's a whole number, you always put it over one. The word of means to multiply or to times or lots of. All of those things mean the same thing. Of, time sign, times, lots of, pro product. All of those things mean multiplication. So that last space there. Is multiplication. Final answers must always be written in simplest form. That's right. Okay, so let's do some of these questions. Here they are. Question number one says to find two thirds of 15 bananas. Now, the working out, two thirds is my starting fraction. Don't yell out, please. Two thirds the word of, I just mentioned before, means to multiply. So we make that a multiplication sign. And we're going to multiply that by 15. Now that's a whole number. And one of the things we just mentioned, any whole number should always be put over one. Okay, so I put that in orange there. I'm putting that whole number over one. So that is my problem. Now I want to solve it preferably without the calculator. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to look for things that we can cancel, and this is the diagonally or on top of each other. So for example, the 15 and the three, so they're diagonal. Both of those numbers can be divided by three. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cross out the 15. 15 divided by three goes five times. And, 3 divided by 3 goes once. Okay, so I have simplified. I've cancelled off there. Once I can cancel no more, which is now, I multiply what is left. And to do that, you multiply the top numbers together. So I have 2 times 5, because that 15 is cancelled off. 2 times 5 is 10 over 1 times 1 which is one. Multiply the tops together, multiply the bottoms together. Now 10 over one is just equal to 10. Okay, so that would be the most simplified way to write that solution. 
Let's practice it. Okay, it's the very first question. Timo, don't yell out, please. It's the very first question. Let's try it again. Two, question two, we want three over 10 of 50 lollies. So like I did last time, three over 10 is my starting fraction. The word of means to multiply, and I'm multiplying that by 50, and I'm gonna put that over one, because any whole number always goes over one. There's the problem. Now we look for canceling. So usually you check diagonally. That's the most common places you'll find canceling. And here it is diagonal, the 10 and the 50. Both of those numbers divide by 10. Try to find the biggest one. Yes, five would work, but 10 is bigger. Okay, the biggest number possible. If I divide by 10, so very neat with your cancelling off, so otherwise it gets confusing what's left to multiply at the end. 10 divided by 10 goes once, so you cross it off and put a one. 50 divided by 10 goes five times. Okay, so those ones I have simplified. You could check the other diagonal as well, three and one. One's not gonna simplify down any further. Okay, so that one's not gonna simplify. So I've done the simplifying. Last step is to multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. So on the top, three times five is 15. On the bottom, one times one is one. If there is a whole number on the bottom, we can just write that as 15. Okay, so that's it, done again. So those two questions were both a little bit wordy because they had the of in there, but they're the same kind of questions as these ones here. Two over three times one over five. It's just, we don't have the words in there. There's the question straight up. So the first thing that we do is look for canceling. So I'm checking the two, the two and the five. No, I can't divide those by anything. I check the three and the one. No, they're not gonna cancel either. There is actually nothing in there that is going to simplify, which happens, so okay? That's right. So since there's nothing to simplify, all I can do is times the tops together. Two times one is two. And times the bottom together, three times five is 15. Okay, now, on the off chance that maybe you missed something, maybe in there we might have missed something that we could have canceled, you could check if your answer is completely simplified by typing in your calculator. So just the final answer there, if you type in two over 15, no, I pressed the equals button and didn't simplify any further. It's just a way of checking to see if there was something that you should have canceled off, okay? But there wasn't. So let's try it again, question four. We have three over four times eight over nine. Looking for cancelling. The three and the nine, looking diagonally there. Both of those numbers can divide by three. So let's do that. Three divided by three goes once. Nine divided by three is three. Okay, let's check the other diagonal. I've got an eight and a four. They will also simplify if I divide by, what should I divide by? Four. Four. I thought you might say two, but I didn't trick you. Well done. You could divide by two, but you always want the biggest number, which would be four. So the biggest number you can divide by is four. So let's, four divided by four will go once, and eight divided by four goes twice. So everything in there got a little bit smaller, got cancelled down. Once everything is simplified as much as possible, we times the tops together. One times two is two. Then we times the bottoms together. One times three is three. And that's it, done. Okay, so it's a little bit less working out in terms of when we had our adding, where we had to get the common denominator, but you have to be looking for those things that you can cancel. Yes, Timo. Could you just do the same like if you didn't do any of the cancelling and you just like multiplied four and nine and then um and then, and then simplified it afterwards? Yeah. Yes, that does work. But 
Um, ideally, you would be trying to do, we want you to be trying to do this without your calculator. Your calculator is there to check, but if these fractions get too big, you'd be having to multiply very big numbers potentially in your head. Um, those ones aren't too big yet, but they will get bigger. And also then simplifying them down. Finding factors of bigger numbers is harder than finding factors of smaller numbers. So please try to cancel first, but the cancelling at the end can be a backup, please. Okay, let's keep going. Question five. I want to find four over eight of, so I'm just going to rewrite that because that word of means times. So four over eight times by three over six. Okay, now we look for cancelling. So let's check our diagonals. The four and the six. We could actually do the four and the eight, but I'm going to stick with the diagonal here. Four and the six, I can divide by two. So let's, four divided by two is two, and six divided by two is three. Now, diagonally the other way, the three and the eight, that's not going to work, is it? But I do have a three on the top and a three on the bottom. Remember that you can do them when they're on top of each other, that it doesn't always have to be diagonally. So I could do those two threes there by dividing by three. So dividing by three, I will get a one and a one. Okay, so this poor six down here is actually canceled twice. So let's multiply what is left. On the top, I have 2 times 1, which is 2. Ooh. On the bottom, I've seen it already. Have you guys seen it? Yeah. On the bottom, 8 times 1 is 8. So as soon as I saw that, I went, oh, I've missed a factor. I could have also cancelled my 2 and my 8 over here. That's okay. We can now cancel it here. So let's go dividing by 2. We would get a 1 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. So it will be one quarter for the most simplified answer. Shh, no one should be talking. Question six, one third of 21. So let's rewrite that. The word of means to, mo oh, it wasn't, mo oh, sorry. It was one third times by 21 over one. I want to put a one on the bottom of that whole of that whole number. Then I'm looking for cancelling. So checking my diagonal, three and twenty-one. I can divide by three. So three divided by three goes once, and twenty-one divided by three goes seven times. Times what's left on the top. One times seven is seven. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1, but we can just write that as a whole number 7. I'm going to start moving some people up the back there. You need to stop talking. Last chance. Next page. Question 7. By the way, guys, marks are allocated to the cancelling part. I do need to see that cancelling when you're doing these questions. So question seven, I have two over five of 30. So that means two over five of means times. And the whole number 30 gets put over one. Then we cancel. So the diagonal, the five and the 30, I can divide by five, which would give me a one and a six. Dividing each of them by five. That's the only cancelling I can do, so I'm going to times what's left. On the top, 2 times 6 is 12, and 1 times 1 on the bottom is 1, or just 12. Okay, getting easier? Good. Question 8. 2 over 11 times 22 over 24. It's already written in the correct way, so we can go straight to cancelling. I can cancel the 2 and the 24. I can divide by 2. So that will give me 1, because 2 divided by 2 goes once, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. I can also cancel the other way. The 11 and the 22 both divide by 11, giving me a 1 and 2. There is still more that I can cancel. 
the two and the twelve on top of each other can both be divided by two. So that would give me two divided by two is one and twelve divided by two is six. Okay, so we just keep cancelling until we can cancel no more. Then we multiply what's left. One times one is all that's on the top. That makes one. On the bottom, one times six is six. Okay, the one is on the top. It has to stay. It's only when the one's on the bottom that you don't write it, okay? Question nine. Looking for cancelling. Checking those diagonals. Eight and four. I can divide by four, the biggest number. So that would give me 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. Going the other way, 15 and 5, I can divide by 5, which gives 5 divided by 5 gives 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. Times the top together, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1. I'm just going to leave it as a 6. Okay, and one more question, number 10. Checking for cancelling, checking those diagonals. 6 and 30, I can divide by 6, giving 1 and 5. Going the other way, 7 and 21, those two numbers will divide by 7. 7 divided by 7 goes once, and 21 divided by 7 goes three times. Let's times what's left. On the top, 1 times 3 is 3, and on the bottom, 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, we need to practice. This is a very new skill.